Hi everyone, this is JP LaForest and in this video I will continue my review of the Low Pro Pro Runner 450 AW bag and also show you some of my photography equipment at the same time and share a bit of my experience with all of them. So the first thing I always bring in my bag is the Canon T2i. The T2i is a very very capable camera and it's great for photography and it's also great for the video quality at 180p. It's very hard to notice a difference between it and the 5D Mark II which uh, kinda launched a revolution of affordable DSLR video. And the TQI comes with the SD cards, which normally I always keep one uh, inside of here, but I think I was transferring pictures earlier. And usually I keep my Tamron lens, which is the Tamron 70 to 300 f4 to 5.6. It's the SP VCDI version. And usually I keep it with uh, the camera because it's the lens that I currently use the most. I've only had it for about a month, but I really love it. The image quality is amazing. The vibration control does a wonderful job. And uh, the aperture of f4 to 5.6 is not that great. But with Lightroom, you can actually remove the noise quite nicely and it's really not that bad. Even with the TTY, ISO up to 800 is really no issue at all. And you can go even at 1600 and higher and you know you can correct it enough that it's uh, very often usable even if you make a bigger picture, like an 8x10 or bigger, it's really no problem with that lens. Alright, the other gear I have here is extra lens hoods. I like using lens, lens hoods mostly because I don't tend to use filters much, so that way it protects my lenses from bumping into somebody or you know, just things like that. So for protection I use the lens hood. And I always carry a cheap tripod with me. It's always practical. It weights maybe a pound or something like that. It can be expanded. And I can use it either to take pictures or also if I'm doing audio I can set up the Zoom H4n on it. And it's uh, does the job quite nicely. It's not a fancy. It's not a fancy tripod in any stretch of the imagination, but you know it does the job. And I do have a few filters here, which uh, I'm really not a big fan of so far. I know filters could be used to do great stuff, but it's not something that that I have explored too much yet. So I have this one which is a circular polarizer and it is good for eliminating some reflections or cutting through haze from clouds or things like that. And I have, this is a neutral density 0 0.6 and this is just a regular UV filter, yeah, UV protector. And these are all from Typhon. It's a kit that came three of them together. And I'm trying to remember the tread size. About 58 millimeter tread size. So that's the other thing too. I have lenses of all sorts of tread sizes. So and I haven't had the chance to get nice filters for all of them or a better kit. Uh, 
The other stuff I carry around is a lens cloth, some cleaning liquid. Also more cleaning liquid, some more lens cloth. These are the for the back and for of the camera and also for the lens. And this is a little pump just in case there's dirt somewhere I need to take it out. And some cables if I need to plug in the camera on a TV or something like that to show a slideshow or show some videos. I can do that with that. And currently I only bring one lens with me which is uh, mostly because uh, I don't really have room anywhere else to put it right now and I bring it with me in case I find somebody that is willing to buy it as is. It works fine, just this switch that falls off, but you can place it back in. Ah, there we go. And then it's functional again. And the autofocus works and everything works on it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this is the Canon 75 to 300 f4 to 5.6. And it's the version 3. I was extremely disappointed with this lens. It's the image quality that really disappoints every time I've used it. It's soft from 75 millimeters all the way to 300. The build quality, as you can see, is really <laughs> abysmal. It's anyway. I can't really say much good about this lens. Uh, I, it really disappoints me that Canon still sells it. Uh, it was probably a fine lens when it came out in 1992, if I remember correctly, for the first version of it. But the way the sensors uh, have progressed is... That lens is really... It's the only piece of equipment I ever tried that I can say it should uh, belong more into a museum than anything else. So yeah, between the two of those, definitely the Tamron, I think, will uh, not disappoint you at all. And over here, always bring a spare battery. And I have the little camera remote, just a switch to have either with a timer or no timer. And in video mode, you can use it to activate the video and also to take pictures either during the video or outside. I have these little headphones that came with, uh, I think probably my iPhone or iPad, I can't remember. But I bring them just in case. I have, this is a wireless USB thing, so if I somewhere and somebody needs it, you know, it's there. I do bring more stuff than is necessary, but to see what else. Aha. I also bring this is a SD card reader by Transcend. And while I did not like the cards that it came with, uh, the USB reader is quite fine. And they do have some great software in case a card gets corrupted. And I have uh, some different cheap cards here. It's mostly in case I have to transfer uh, photos to somebody, then, you know, I can just give them a card and if they don't bring it back, uh, I have one of those that's uh, I think a 12 megabyte card or something like that, so it can't even hold uh, a full uh, raw image or anything. So, you know, if, no, if the person just steals it or whatever, I really don't care. And I have this thing, which is a plump bob. And if you attach it at the end of a lens, 
while doing panoramas, you can make sure that your the end of your lens is always on the same spot on the floor. And you just put a penny or something on the ground as a reference mark or a rock or whatever you have available. Alright, and here I have this is my Spear memory card, which is a SanDisk Extreme. Uh, it's a class 10, 30 megs per second, and it's a 16 gig card. Uh, I have uh, two of these, and they're really, really, really great. The transfer speeds are great. You can take a lot of pictures in a row with them. And also, while doing video on the T2i, you can take pictures. The video will freeze while the picture is taking, uh, so it will uh, have a negative impact on the video. But sometimes there's uh, really great opportunities for pictures that come up, and you just press the shutter and it takes a picture, and it does not stop the video. I tried with the Transcend the Class 6 cards, and I could sometimes squeeze in one picture if I was lucky and that's it. With these, really no problem at all. Also bring some spare batteries for the Zoom H4M. So that's it for this bag. And now just in this one, I do have, this is my 18 to 55 uh, Canon lens with image stabilizer. It's, uh, the image quality of it is actually quite acceptable. Uh, for being a kit lens, I've been very satisfied with it. Uh, sometimes, yeah, I wish it had a bit better images, but, you know, in general, it's fine, really. The only thing is the plastic here for the, uh, the tread has broken off. And I never dropped this lens, and the same thing with the other Canon, the 75-300. I never dropped any of these, and, and it just shows to show like the image quality, uh, the build quality of these lenses is a bit on the cheap side but it's still functional and you know it's still uh, it's a lens I do use anytime I need a wide angle shot and with the image stabilizer I have been able to take pictures as slow as half a second so even if the aperture is not that fast I mean you can compensate with that in with a higher ISO. And this is, well, this used to be my favorite lens. It's the 50mm f1.8. And I still love it. It's still great. The image quality is better than what the Canon T2i can record. Actually. So, I mean, it is overkill for the camera I have. And when I bought it, it was $99, so, I mean, it was a really great buy. The only reason that it's not my favorite lens anymore is because I bought the Tamron 70-300 SV, and that one, I'm more of a telephoto shooter in general, so for me the Tamron is much better, but the image quality of the 50mm 1.8 is really great. Uh, DxO Mark has done some reviews on it and it actually surpassed even the 50mm f1.4 and even the L lens 1.2. In image quality the 1.8 actually came out better. Uh, the autofocus is slow and you know it does have disadvantages but uh, it's definitely Definitely a great lens, and for anybody starting out, I very, very greatly recommend it. So there we have it. That's my gear so far. If there's anything you would like 
more in-depth review about or some tips on how to use or something like that, just leave a comment below and I'll try to make a video on it. And as usual, please subscribe to see my other videos and have a great day.